You may remember last time Fanny found herself rotting in a jail. Rotting? No. Smoldering? Yes. Well, she wasn't the only thing smoldering, as a spate of fires broke out across town thanks to the pack, from the casino to the well-respected house of felines. Say it ain't so. It is so. It's also so that they were all owned by one red raccoon, who just got a nice payout as all the properties were insured. With Fanny sprung thanks to the pack's distraction, it was time to put part two into play. Hey, that's my line. Oh, huh, sorry. All right, girls, it's time to put part two into play at Bond's plan. We've helped Red Raccoon liquidate all of his assets, turning them into nice checks from the insurance company. Checks which he got yesterday evening. But... Today is Saturday, so he can't cash them. So they're just sitting in his vault at his house. And we are going to liberate them with some very special help from Fawn. Yes, I'll be going in undercover as a member of the Amalgamated Insurance Company. A member of the Amalgamated Insurance Company is here to see you, boss. Send them in. Hello, miss. Uh... Miss Flora. Well, Miss Flora, how can I help you today? Very simple. We made a mistake. A mistake? Yes, you see, if you look at Chapter 27, Subsection G, Cross Section 3, on page 432.5 of your policy concerning assiduous arson and other acts, you'll see that due to the conflagration of events and dubious declarations, we have determined that your policy has triggered the Triple Indemnity Clause. Triple indemnity clause? Yes. Sadly, we owe you triple what we originally paid you. Triple? <laughs> wow! Yes, and I'll write you out some new checks, but I'll need the old ones back. Of course. Here they are. Hey, boss. Another member of the Amalgamated Insurance Company is here to see you. Really? Bring them up. Uh-oh. Here he is, boss. Ah, Mr. Insurer, I was just having an amazing conversation with your colleague here. Colleague? But I've never seen this woman before. Oh, really? Tell me, does my policy have a triple indemnity clause? I should say not. Such a thing doesn't even exist. I thought so. You better talk, lady. Who are you? She's Flora the Finagler. I'm sorry, who are you? Apologies. Officer Wheeler, Treasury Department. We've been watching this one for a while, and now we finally caught her red-handed, uh, no offense, trying to steal your checks. It's a good thing you showed up, officer. Isn't it, Mr. Red? Uh, yes, it sure is. I'll be taking her into custody. I'll need those checks, too, as they are evidence. Oh, of course, officer. Here you go. Oh, wait. I should void these, just in case. Yes, just in case. I'll write you out new ones immediately, Mr. Ed. And with that, Ferris, I mean Officer Wheeler, escorted Fran back to her car. That was pretty slick of you back there. Yes, I saw the real insurer enter the property and knew you would be discovered, so I hatched a plan. I almost got the checks, too. You and me both. Tell me, though, where'd you get a batch so quickly? Why, the same place the cops get theirs. And where's that? The bottom of a Cracker Jack box. And that was a cracker of a plan Fawn had. A plan that cracked and crumbled. And it was about to get worse, as unbeknownst to them, Red's goon had been watching them from the rooftop. You were right, boss. She took out the cuffs once they left. I'm always right. Do what you must. And with that, the goon leveled a sniper rifle right at our gals. Oh, what will become of them? Find out next time in A Shot in the Dark, or Two for the Tomb.